learning in his environment and the direct learning that comes from the attachment to Allah, we would not have followed him. So we too, even though we're definitely not prophets, are expected to develop our minds and our intellects to the highest degree possible. There's one very interesting hadith that's circulated often in the Muslim West. It may not be a strong hadith, but it still makes a lot of sense. According to this hadith, the Prophet said, no misfortune is worse than the ignorance of one's own family. So out of this intellect then comes the forbearance, the mercy, the kindness of the Prophet. And again, following the Quran. Qadi Ayad chooses two particular verses from the Quran to show the roots of the Prophet's kindness and forbearance. The first is Khud al-Afwa wa Amur bil Urf. In other words, choose pardon and advocate kindness. The other is Fasbir kama sabra ulu al azmi min rusul. Be patient as the messengers of firm resolve were patient. And again, he cites another hadith from Aisha that we should especially remember in times such as these, where Aisha said about the Prophet, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, never favored one command over another except to choose the easier of the two. Ma khuyra Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi amrain qattu illa akhtara aysara huma. In other words, he chose the easier of the two courses of action to make people fall, follow. The forbearance and sense of mercy that made up such an important part of the Prophet's character is all too often forgotten today when Islam has become political, where even relatively minor differences of opinion are condemned as kufr or lack of aqidah. I can remember just a month ago speaking to someone, well-trained, mature man in the Sufi tradition, criticizing another well-known Sufi, a scholar, Sayyid Hussein Nasser, saying that he's a good man, but I have problems with his aqidah. What does he mean by this? That he does not say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, he obviously says that. Does he believe in the arcanal Islam, the five pillars? Does he believe in the pillars of faith? Well, would the Prophet ask for anything more of Aqidah than this? That's definitely not thinking clearly with the Aql, the way the Prophet would want to think. So again, even some Sufis do that. And indeed, the key to this thinking clearly, this Aql, and how it gives birth to mercy, comes with a very important hadith from the Prophet that again is often forgotten today. The Prophet said, I was not sent to curse other people. Rather, I was sent as a caller to the truth and a mercy to mankind. O oh Allah, guide my people for they do not understand. Inni lam ubbath la'anan bu'ithtu da'iyan wa rahmatan Allahumma idhi qawmi, uh, ihdi qawmi fa innuhum la ya'lamun. A similar degree of patience and forbearance must also be applied to those who are beneath us and depend on us. As Aisha also said, the Prophet never struck anything with his hand unless he was fighting in the cause of Allah. And he never once struck a servant and he never once struck a woman. So, let me end here by saying this. If we're going to look at what is the essence the root of the Sunnah, to find out what is most important for us to follow. It's not only the details, it's not only the surface, it's also what's in the inside. If we are to assimilate the Sunnah in our lives as followers of Tasawuf, we have to assimilate first of all the consciousness that gives rise to it. Part of that consciousness is patience, part of it is intellect. Much of it is morals and ethics. Much of it also has to do with forgiveness and softness and rahma and mercy. And again, let me end by looking once again at the three basic parts of a dhikr that one finds everywhere in Tasawuf, whether one's with the Naqshbandi tradition or the, or the Shadali tradition or almost any other. We all start with an istighfar, a astaghfirullah. We do that because we all have faults as human beings and we're asking Allah's forgiveness and pardon for our nafs. We all say la ilaha illallah as we did earlier this morning in one form or another because that's the fundamental truth. But we also, as we did today, all say in one way or another 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We make our prayer on the Prophet. Why do we make our prayer on the Prophet? We make it to honor him. We make it because we love him. But most of all, if we're following the way of the Prophet and his companions, and the following the way of the Qur'an, we do this because we get out of ourselves and assimilate into him. We assimilate into him, not just in what we wear, not just in what we do, but in how we feel, how we think, and how we are to our brothers and sisters. So I'm one.